So in this video, we're going to introduce rotational energy, and we're going to do it in a very specific way, which is through asking a question. Um, I'm going to have a hula hoop. And uh, we're actually going to have two hula hoops, hula hoops. And one of them, we're going to roll and ask how high up a hill it gets. And the other one, we're going to put on ice, and we're going to slide it up the hill. And we're going to ask which one gets higher. Okay? That's our simple question. Let's start with the ice one, since we've already done this one, or something like it. We know for that something sliding up a hill. Um, let's give it some initial velocity for both of these. Let's give them five meters a second. And let's make them um, each two kilograms. Um, <coughs> so, um, we know for a sliding hula hoop, the energy initial is equal to energy final. We know that at the beginning there's some initial kinetic energy. I'm going to set this point as y equals zero so there's no initial potential energy. And we know that the kinetic energy at the beginning, if we want to know when it stops up at the top of the hill, it's just going to equal to the, ener the potential energy at the end. Well, we have one half mv squared is equal to mgh. Our m's are going to cancel out. We find that the height that it gets to is just going to be v squared over 2g. Or in this case, um, it's going to be 25 meters squared per second squared divided by around 20. So we're going to get um, something like uh, um, 1.2 or 1.3 meters. Okay? And that's for the sliding one. Now, <coughs> we're going to do the same thing for a rolling one. Now, of course, energy is conserved in both cases. We're going to assume there's no friction, or at least that there's no, um, there's no energy loss to friction. There has to be friction for things to roll. There has to be static friction. We're going to assume there's no, no energy loss to that friction. We want to set this up the same way. Now it turns out that we're missing one thing, which is that now our kinetic energy, we have two different kinds of kinetic energy. We have kinetic energy translational, which is the one that we're used to, and then we also have kinetic energy rotational. And what that rotational energy is, is you can think about it, that's the energy that comes from the fact that the hula hoop is rotating, okay? Um, and if you want to think about this, if I actually, <coughs> excuse me, if I actually roll, uh, get, a, get a hula hoop spinning in the air, and I let it fall to the ground, it'll start moving in the direction that it's spinning uh, because of that rotational energy. You can think of that same thing with a ball. If a ball is spinning um, and we put it on the ground, it's going to roll off in the direction of uh, the, the, that it was spinning. Um, that's basically transferring rotational energy to, con to, to translational energy. The point is that there's such a thing as rotational energy, and anytime something's rotating, it has e extra energy contained inside of it. So let's look at, so we can still put our, our, our normal 1 half mv squared for the translational. It turns out that the rotational energy has a very similar form, which is 1 half i omega squared. And that's just going to be mgh. Now, of course, this is the part that's new that we're going to have to explain. All right. Okay. Let's get. Let me do this over here. 
Um, there are two parts of it that we haven't talked about yet, both I and omega. Um, uh, let's talk about omega first, because um, in some ways that's more interesting. Omega is just the rotational velocity. Okay, so what that is is if I have a hoop and I put a mark on it, okay, the, the rotational velocity is how far it moves from one part of the circle to the other part of the circle, or it's basically, if we call this the angle that it travels through, delta theta, then omega, the angular velocity, is just how much that angle changes over the time it takes to change. Okay? Um, so, and we always are going to be doing this in units of what are called radians, Radians are a unit uh, of angle where it, when you go the whole way around in a circle, it's 2 pi radians. So just to do a quick example, um, if, if, we, um, if we spun around 2 times completely per second, okay, the angle that we would go through, it's 2 pi for every time we go around. So we would go 1, so that's 2 pi, 2 would be 4 pi, so our omega would go 4 pi, which would be the change in the angle, and if we do that every second, that's per second, so that would give us a, a, a angular velocity of 4 pi uh, radians per second, because this is in radians. So that's the idea of omega. Again, omega is basically how fast something is spinning. Okay, and there's a there's an important relationship between omega and the linear velocity, in that um, uh, for something that's rolling without slipping, um, the velocity, the the linear velocity, or the velocity of of the whole hoop itself, is just equal to r, where r is the radius, times omega. No, I'm not going to prove that. I'm just going to tell you that that's true. Okay, uh, if you want, I can give you the proof for it sometime. <coughs> Excuse me, my cold has gotten much worse. Um, so if we take r times omega, that gives us our velocity, our linear velocity. Or the other way to think about that is that if we want to find omega and we know the linear velocity, we just take v divided by r. Okay. So that's how we're going to get this part up here of that equation uh, of the angular velocity. And it makes sense, right? It, it, what it's saying is that if thing is spin, something is spinning faster, it has more energy in it. Things that are spinning slow don't, okay. Um, the other, the, the something, uh, so the other thing we need to figure out is what this I is. I wanna point out that this I is very similar to M. So if you think about what is mass, all right, so what is mass in this equation? If you think mass, um, is uh, is how hard it is to either start something moving or stop it from moving once it's started, okay? Um, I is very similar. It's called the moment of inertia, and it's the same idea. Um, it's how easy it is to start something spinning and how or how hard it is to start something spinning and how hard it is to stop something spinning. Okay, so something, a really big wheel, uh, that's very hard to stop, would have a very high I, a very high moment of inertia. Something um, like a bicycle wheel that actually spins around pretty easily um, has, has a very low moment of inertia. Um, and there, there's a, 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 the, the, the moment of inertia is basically related to both how much the thing weighs and how much that weight is distributed around, that, around uh, the point, the axis that the thing is rotating. Uh, where the more weight you have that's further away from the center, the higher moment of inertia. So if you think about, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, two wheels that weigh the same amount. So if I have one wheel that weighs, um, you know, let's say five kilograms, but has a, a very small radius versus another one that still weighs the same amount but has a larger radius, this one is going to have a larger eye.
a larger moment of inertia. Okay, this the other one's going to have a smaller. Okay, um, and obviously, uh, if um, if you increase the mass of the things, uh, it's going to make the moment of inertia taller. So we're looking at the moment of inertia in this case of, of a hoop uh, as it kind of rolls around and, it, and like hoops tend to do. Um, the good news is we're never we're not I'm not going to make you guys go around and calculate moments of inertia. We're just going to look them up, okay? And so if you look right here, and this is straight out of our book, um, they have moments of inertia right here. Um, and if you see right in the upper left, okay, right here, um, uh, we have um, a, a hoop about its central axis, and you see that the i is equal to mr squared, okay, where the r is the radius and m is the mass, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and come back here. Sorry about that. Um, and plug that in. So going back to our equation up here, we're going to say we have 1 half m v squared plus 1 half now our i, again, is m, where that's the mass, times the radius of the hoop squared. I'm also going to plug in our omega here. All right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, where omega, again, is just equal to v over r, the linear velocity divided by the radius. All right. And you see that um, we have an omega squared there. And so if we bring that down, we put in omega squared, but instead put v over r and make that squared. And then again, that's just equal to mgh. Now something really funny happens for, um, for hoops. And this is only for hoops, so I don't want you to think this is going to be a general equation. But for hoops, uh, because of the, the, the way that their moment of inertia is, you see um, we get 1 half m r squared and then we get a v squared over r squared if I multiply that squared out um, and you notice these r squareds cancel out and when I rewrite that I'm just going to get 1 half m v squared plus 1 half m v squared is equal to m g h so you kind of have that interesting thing where those r squareds cancel out um, I can now just go ahead and add these together, and I just get that mv squared is equal to mgh. The masses cancel out. It turns out I didn't even need to know the mass of the, the hoop. Um, and you get that the height that it rolls to is just equal to v squared over g, which, again, if we said that the hoop was going 5 meters per second, we get 25 meters squared per second squared, when I square it, divided by 10 meters per second squared, or the height that this is going to get to is 2.5 meters. Now this is getting up to 2.5 meters where you notice the sliding one just got up to 1.3 meters. That's because if they're both moving at 5 meters a second, this one is just sliding along up the hill, whereas this one's rotating up the hill. Um, it has both the linear velocity, the kinetic energy coming the linear velocity, and the, the energy coming from the fact that it's rotating. And that's what allows it to get further up the hill, which is why a rolling uh, um, uh, hoop gets 2.5 meters up the hill, and a sliding one only gets 1.3 meters up the hill. So that's rotational energy, basically, at its at its basic. Um, again, um, just like all of our energy problems, nothing nothing new necessarily, except for this new equation for rotational energy that we have to get a bit of a handle on. Although, again, our I will just look up. And omega, um, we either calculate from how fast we know it's spinning or from uh, just its linear velocity if it's rolling on the ground. Other than that, the problems are pretty straightforward. Um, hopefully, we'll get a hang of it pretty quickly, and uh, you can ask me any questions you have in class. Uh, thanks a lot, and I'll see you later.